Hey everybody, Jake here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Wii Knives NAR. Um, this is a relatively new release from Wii, it's on the smaller side of their, uh, of their knives for sure. Um, very interesting design, very interesting name, and uh, we're just going to take a quick look today, not a comprehensive review, just more of a, a slightly more in-depth overview. So let's go ahead and get into some size comparisons. All right, so first up, we have it against the Victorinox Classic SD. If it can stay there. So, although the, the SD is a very, very small knife, this isn't that much bigger. Um, here it is against the Spyderco Little Native. Very, very similar in, uh, in size. About three-fourths of an inch on either side of that. And then we have it here against the Spyderco Shaman which is much, much smaller than. Um, it's probably directly in the middle between the Shaman and the Native, honestly. So it's probably about the size of a regular Native. Um, that's just a guess. I haven't actually handled a, a regular size Native. But yeah, so it's it's mid to small knife. All right, on to what I like about it. So first up is gonna be the build quality. This knife is built very, very well. The machining is excellent on it. The materials used are excellent. It's uh, titanium and S35VN. There's no, you know, fit and finish issues. Everything that's supposed to be flush is, uh, there's nothing that sticks out or uh, stabs into your hand or anything like that um, when you're just picking it up and holding it. So overall, it's, it's a very, very well-made knife. All the corners around it, everything's chamfered. And it's, it's just a nice knife overall. The blade is very nice as well. Um, you have a little bit of a harpoon there up near the uh, up near the tip just to give it a bit of character. And it's it's really, really well ground. Very thin behind the edge. I don't have exact measurements because my calipers are broken. But it slices very, very well. And um, it also is very good at, at uh, piercing cuts. And it's, it's a fairly small blade. It's sub 3 inches. It's around 2.8 or so. So very, very legal, um, very well ground, and it, it cuts very well. My only gripe with the blade is it's very reflective, and as you can see, it takes on scratches very, very easily. Um, but that, that could just be this one here. The action on it is very good as well. Um, these thumb studs are very, very nice to use. They're just standard thumb studs, maybe a little bit wider than most, um, but the action on the knife is excellent. I've had no missed deploys with this at all. Um, the thumb studs don't dig in, they don't hurt your finger, and because these scales um, have this kind of cut out, this groove on both sides, you can spidey flick it very easily if you prefer to do it that way, or if you're left-handed, you can come in from that side, although the frame lock part might be a challenge for you. The clip is also very good. This is probably my favorite part of the knife. And the clip is extremely low profile. Um, it's still a milled clip. You still get that, um, that little bit of spring, but very good tension, a very nice flowing design. It also has this very, very cool little logo here, the Maker's Mark, on the clip. Um, this is probably one of my favorite clip logos. It's, it's you know, it doesn't stick out. It's not like you have CRKT or anything, just winding your way down the clip. Um, it's a bit more subtle than, say, like the Spider Co. Spider logo. Um, but it's just an interesting design. It's very geometric. I like it a lot. And the clip works very well. Um, it slides in and out of the pocket very, very easily. Uh, I haven't had any issues g getting it over uh, thicker material like uh, jeans or anything like that. Um, but if it's a very, very thick pant, you might have an issue getting over that just because the clearance isn't super, super high. Um, I mentioned the milling earlier on the scales. And what that does is it's like a, it's like a diamond pattern milling. Um, it's very, very nice. It looks like it is much more aggressive than it actually is. It actually offers just some nice texturing. I mean, it's not aggressive at all. It just kind of gives you a bit more grip. Um, it's not gonna mess up your pockets or anything like that. It's it's nowhere near as uh, textured as just, say, a regular G10 or something like that. Um, but it isn't nearly as slippery as a regular titanium either. It's a nice in-between. Um, probably one of my favorite textures on titanium that I've held before, um, just in hand, uh, like feel-wise. It's very, very nice. They also did an excellent job with the backspacer. It is a um, almost full-length backspacer. And one really nice touch, because this knife has a really good uh, blade-to-handle uh, ratio compared to some, 
um, they actually brought the backspacer down so that you can't poke yourself with the end of the blade. So the backspacer goes all the way around. Um, and again, it's perfectly flush. There's no chance of you cutting yourself with the blade or anything like that. And it kind of reduces the chance of you getting debris in there from your pocket anyway. I really like uh, full length and semi full length backspacers. Probably one of my favorite um, little details on knives that, that uh, makers can do. The um, lock bar relief is also really, really interesting. So normally you get like a kind of just a, uh, a weird cutout, uh, kind of like here on the Pison. It's just a massive, you know, gap cut out of there. On this, they did something uh, a bit more. I hesitate to say artsy. I'm a bit more in line with the design. I think they just did three cuts there. It it just flows a little bit better, and there's no issue with the lock bar tension at all on this knife. Um, I'm not a big fan of the actual lock bar itself, but we'll get to that later. Um, but those cutouts look really, really nice, and I, I really like the way they flow into the design. I actually didn't notice them until I was sitting there handling the knife, really looking for stuff. Um, so they, they don't interrupt the design at all. I think they look very, very in place. And last thing here is going to be the branding. Um, so I mentioned the logo on the uh, clip, and the only other logo on this whole knife is the Wii logo right there on the pivot. There's nothing on the blade at all, uh, nothing on the spine or the front. You know, the normal places people hide stuff. It, the branding is just excellent on this knife. It's very minimal, and I like it a lot. Let's go ahead and go into what I'm neutral towards. Only a few things here. Um, first up is going to be the lock bar. I mentioned... Um, I really like the relief cut on the lock bar, and I, I do. It's it's very visually interesting. But the lock bar itself, um, it has a, a very, very slender cut out here. You might be able to see it um, to kind of help you get your finger in there. But it's just, it's a pain for me. Um, I don't I don't like it very much. It's just too narrow for my finger. Um, so the lock bar is, uh, I, I, it's not bad. It, it could be worse for sure. Um, but for me, it's for me, it's bad. For most people, I think it's going to be just fine. It's just a little slim, a little bit hard to get in there. Um, but it does work just fine. The lock bar tension is dialed in very, very well. But that very slim little section for me to get my thumb in is a little irritating. The other thing is, I mentioned the pivot. Um, the Wii branded pivot on this side is, you know, it's flush. Um, it's, you know, it's their logo. It's, it's, it is what it is. That's kind of what Wii does in all of their knives. And it's fine. It doesn't stick out too bad. Um, it almost matches up kind of with the lock bar cut out, so it's it's fine. Um, but this side over here is not flush. Um, you can see it does jut out there, and I don't know why they did that. I'm not a big fan of it. It doesn't interfere with, you know, the pocket clip or anything silly like that. It's just a minor annoyance. Um, I wish they had made that flush as well, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, last thing is going to be the price. So these knives are a little bit high for what you get. I don't think they're insane they're 227 so for 227 dollars you get s35 vn and titanium um normally i would say that's a little high but you have to consider all this milling that was done um on these handles and that you know semi full length backspacer there milled clip you know it's you can see where your money's gone um i think if this knife came in somewhere around like 175 or so um it would look much much better price wise but this isn't bad you know I, i've seen more expensive knives with lesser materials and much less milling you know for for a lot more money so this is actually really nice it's well finished and the materials are pretty good and they're not the price isn't outrageous it's a little irritating 230 bucks for what in my eyes is kind of a mediocre knife we'll get to that in, in the conclusion just a little bit high Let's go ahead and go on to what I dislike about it. All right. Um, so here are my big gripes about the knife. Um, so far, I've mentioned that it's very well made. Uh, the blade works very well. It's very well, well ground. The shape is interesting. The design overall is, is a very interesting little design. It's It just doesn't work for me. Um, this It's just too small. Um, I normally like something a bit more girthy, a bit longer um, in the hand, and this just, this doesn't do it for me. Um, they say it's not the size of the boat, but if I were in this one, I would, I would drown. Um, I can only get a three-finger grip on it. Um, there's very little space for my fourth finger, just enough to piss me off, because I can't, I can feel it there, but I can't get a good grip on it. Um, 
and I don't know. I think this knife would have done very, very well with a finger choil. I think that would have made it a little bit, a um, little bit more usable for me. But it's just, it's just too hard um, for me to get a grip on. And uh, again, it's very well made. Um, the action is rock solid. It's not, you know, a, a flaccid flipper. It's not kind of just wiggling out there it's it's really really nice it's very smooth everything's done very well but the ergonomics don't work for me I mean, it's just too short um, it's not chunky enough it's not thick enough i just don't get any pleasure from this at all um, you know in the hand let's go on to the conclusion all right so in conclusion the wee nar is an interesting little knife it's just too small for for me personally if you really like smaller knives if you think you can get a you know a comfortable grip on this you know check it out especially if you can pick one up used um, I don't normally advocate that but these knives uh, on secondary market are so soft and squishy price wise that it's it's insane you could probably pick one up for like 150 bucks realistically um, maybe 170 or so which is a, a much much better price so if you don't mind a knife that may just, you know, be a little too limp for your hand, this is a good place to go. It's it's very well made. The design is interesting. Um, it curves just a little bit, you know, a little upward, um, which, you know, some knives do that. It, it just really depends. I've seen them all different ways. Um, but that little bit of curve there might be really ergonomic for you. I think they could take a few handle cues from Fair and Forge as far as how to properly design a handle. Um, that really really fits you know in a hand but this isn't this isn't bad I just wish it were bigger girthier chunkier and um, a little bit more natural feeling in the hand but that's going to be it for today guys um, if you have any questions about this knife or anything else just let me know down in the comments and I'll try to do my best to answer them and I uh, hope you all have a good day thanks guys bye